So this is the first of five programs that we need to write in order to get the tic-tac-toe board working with all the things that we have. So the first is we're going to take care of the nine micro bits that form the tic-tac-toe grid. And this is really, really easy to do. We're going to trigger this here when we press button A, which is player one, to show an X. Player two it uses button B to display the O. And then if we just need to erase something, say we make a mistake, we just want to clear it, we can put in an option for A, B. And this is all we need. And we'll actually just download this code to all nine of those micro bits. And so the way that we find these are really pretty simple. They're all color coded. So we would jump over here to input. And we're just going to drag this icon out on button A pressed. And you can choose here A, B, or A, B. All right. And we're just going to go here to basic. And we're going to drag down here to show icon. And in this icon, we could then click what we want to use. So there's the X, there's the O. You can use any diagram you want. If you wanted to write your own image, you could go here to basic and you could go to the show LED. And then you could actually click on which lights you would like to light up if you wanted a custom tic-tac-toe board. Uh, I just use the icons because that was the easiest to do. And then I would just do that again here. So I would go back to input. I would drag this out over here. I would choose, make this B, show the icon, and then this is just blank where there's no LEDs showing. And once you have that ready to go, you would save. It's going to download it. You download it to all your micro bits, and then you can test it. So we go over here to the simulator. There's the A for the X, O for B. If we want to clear it, there it is. So we know that it works. All right. I will have the link to this code and all the other codes down below in the show notes, but that is the first program to show X's and O's on the tic-tac-toe grid. So this code is for the random number generator off on the side of the Hollywood Square um, arena. This allows us to the PowerPoint once we pose a question. We might have anywhere from three to seven or eight videos of responses that we could choose for for the answer for the participant to either choose to agree or disagree. And so you can cater this to your own liking. All I've done here was drag out this on shake, which is in the input command right here. We drag that out. All right, and then I just set a variable, and I just set it to tool, okay? And so what we would do, I'll build this off to the side here. We got on shake, all right? We're going to drag this out, the set item. We can rename this. You could call this whatever you want. Um, I can just call it person for the sake of this one. And then we got the zero. We don't want to set it to zero. We want a random generator and so we're going to go here um, and we're going to pick random and it's going to pick from zero to whatever number so i picked seven because the most i have on any given slide for hollywood squares is seven but there that is um, you can move that to any number you want and so when we shake the accelerometer is going to then pick a number and then what we're going to do is we want to display that and so we'll go here to the loops, or excuse me, to the logic. And what we want to do is drag this if, then, else. Okay? And we don't want the true here. We want to bring our variable in. And so we're going to go to some logic. All right? And we're going to drag this one over. And then we're going to squeeze in our variable. So if our person, this number, and notice I didn't do zero because I don't need zero. But if it's equal to 1 to the first person, then we want to show that string. We want to show the number 1. So we're going to then show 1. And that's what's going to show on the micro bit. And then we would click the first video on the PowerPoint screen. Now you can see we have a lot more options here because I don't want just two options. So I'm going to click this little gearbox right here. And I can just drag these over. So I can go right here. And it's going to add that in. Okay, and I could keep doing this. Else, if person equals one, we're going to show string one. Else, if, and we would just copy the same thing. So, what I like to do, I just like to copy these. And we can just drag this open if, oh, excuse me, logic here. 
if person equals two, we're going to show the string two. And we would just continue to do that all the way down. All right, so once you have it with the amount of numbers that you want, as you can see down here, I've got one through seven. When I go to shake my micro bit, there's four, there's three, and it's just going to show these numbers as we go through. And then that's the movie or the video response I'm going to click on on the PowerPoint. So that's how you get a random number generator to your needs of your game. So the third program we're going to do is actually going to be sending out the radio signal to the board when we want to clear it. So when the game is over and we want to just clear all nine boards without actually having to click each one individually, this is how you do it. We're going to start with the on start button, okay, which is found right here in the basic on the start. And we're going to radio set the group to one. So when we went back in that previous with our X's and O's, you would notice that there was a code in there that set that whole radio group to one. So this micro bit's going to communicate with those nine other micro bits because they're all in group one. And you can code these groups. You can have from groups one through 256, I believe. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to do this on button again, which was in our input on the button. And I just connected A and B, so we, it's almost more intentional when you do that. It's going to send the string new game out. It's going to shoot this signal, this string of these words out, boom, to the group. And then what it's going to do, it's going to show a check mark on that one individual micro bit. The one that we pushed to A and B on, it's going to show that check mark and then it's going to clear it. Okay, and then I just had this one doesn't really, you don't need this. I just wanted to make sure that my new code works, so I just had this little giraffe image here. And so if I hit A, there's a little giraffe. A and B, it's going to send that check mark, and then it's going to shoot this out to the people, to the code. All right, and so I'll show you what that looks like here. So all that's doing is just sending out the new game to the nine participants, or the nine micro bits in the tic tac. <laughs> So in our fourth command here, now what we've got going on, this is going back to that tic-tac-toe group that we were talking about earlier. Remember when we programmed, we hit A, it would show the X, B, it would show the O for player one and player two. We put those in here, if you remember this. Okay. But what we've got here is on the start, we've got radio group set to one. So this is going to connect all the nine micro bits to group one. So we got our X, we got our O, we got our clear. Then we have this command right here. When the radio receives the string, so we sent the string new game, okay, so we, it doesn't matter what we type in there. When a string is received, okay, and that's found right here in the radio, on radio receives string right here, we drag that over. I wanted to show this string. I want to show this string new game. So I just labeled the string new game, but I'm going to display it. So it's going to scroll on all those micro bits new game. Then it's going to show this little icon, and then they're all going to clear empty. And so this is how we communicate when it receives a string. It's going to show a new game, symbol, empty the board. Now we can play our next game of tic tac toe or Hollywood Squares. All right, guys, for the final piece of code, this is going to be the code that lights up the hot glue LED minifigs and also keeps track of our score. And so we'll install these on both of the minifig micro bits. Um, so what we've got here is this on a button A press. So when we win a tic-tac-toe or Hollywood squares, we want to keep track of our score. And so we're going to go over here to this add this digital write pin. Now a lot of people have a hard time finding this. This is actually under the advanced block and we're going to go down here to pins. And When you click on pins you're going to see the digital read, the digital write, analog read and write, your map flow, and then servos. And So we want the digital read pin uh, or digital write pin, excuse me. And so I could have plugged my alligator clip into 0, 1, or 2. I'm using 0, but if you want to use a different pin, you just change it to the pin of your liking, to pin 1, 2, 3. I mean, there's 20 pins on there. Most of you will just use 0, 1, or 2. And then we're going to use this to 1. So binary is 1 is on, and then 0 is off. And so we're going to give power to the LED. 
So we're going to write the pin zero on. We're going to pause 500 milliseconds so it stays on for a half a second here. And then we're going to write to zero. We're actually going to turn the light off. And then we're going to change the score. So the change score is in the variable. So this is that change item. I just renamed the variable score because that's what we're doing. And I inserted a math block right here. So I just grabbed this little guy right there and dragged it in there. And I want to increase the score by one. And once I do that, then I want to show that new score. So we're going to show the number. And I just inserted a variable again of score. So it's going to turn the light on, turn the light off, add one to the score, show that score. And then I slipped in this little fun guy here. So this is another if-then statement. If the score is equal to 5, we're going to show the string winner, and then we're just going to clear it off. So if you want to play like the best of 5 series in Tic-Tac-Toe or Hollywood Squares, you could add this in here. And so it'll display winner once you get to 5. But say we mess up and we want to take away a point, maybe someone goofed up or cheated or whatever, as opposed to resetting everything, I just did an on B button press. This is the exact same code over here, except for now we're going to change the score by the math block of a negative one. And if I just need to clear the whole thing, I just have over here a safety net. If we push A and B together, it would just clear the board. So when we go here, you can see that we're going to add a score like we're doing. If I mess up, I can go back a number. And then when I get to five, it'll display the winner. So we can have lots of fun with this. You could have it in a way where the sound plays. If you had headphones or speakers plugged into the micro bit, it can make noise and music, whatever you want to do. But this is just a fun way to keep track of stuff. All right, guys, so this is the fifth and final code. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you learned a few things. And if you have any ideas or suggestions to make this look cooler or better, please let me know. I'll be moving on to building some new projects, so I'm always willing to learn from you. And in the meantime, I hope you stay awesome and never stop learning. Take care, everybody.